Hi there, I'm TK, also known as Technical Knowledge. I stream almost entirely on Twitch, viewer battles, rank battles, and other stuff as well. There's a link in the description to my channel, so come check me out! And now, on to the video. How's it going my viewers? So I've decided to explain how I go about making a team whether it's for VGC, online competitions, or if I'm forced to, you know, battle in singles. You know, to explain my thought process, I'll go with explaining how my current VGC team was constructed to fit the current meta based on what my past team was in the previous VGC series. I figured I should make this video because while watching another streamer struggle to break into Master Ball using teams that won highly competitive events, but when asked the question of why don't they just build their own team, they responded they lacked the knowledge to really create a team of their own design. They eventually got into Master Ball, but it took them over 60-70 battles using a team that took first place in a competition, while I got into Master Ball in less than half the time using the squad you're currently seeing in battle. Now, let's actually make the team instead of just talking. My first decision when making the team is going to be choosing the first Pokemon, the cornerstone of my team, aka the main player of the squad, or the Pokemon that is going to be in every battle I have with this team. Now, you can base this decision on any num number of factors, personal biases, whatever. Perhaps you're picking it for the sheer dominating strength it has, or its powerful stats, or just because it's your favorite Pokemon. In my case, I'm picking Hatterene for no other reason than because its name includes Hat, and I like hats. The fact that she G-maxes is just a bonus for me. Now that I have my starting Pokemon for the team, let's look at our stats. She has high offensive pressure in both physical and special stats, with very good defensive stats, but as I see a very poor speed and lackluster health stat. This means she is powerful and bulky, but can't take many hits, and more importantly, she likes operating in a trick room setting. While she can set it up herself, her low health means she might not survive to make full use of it. So, in order to bring in a tankier, healthier Pokemon to set up the trick room for me, I bring Gothitelle, as she can handle more threats and tank similar damages. But, I can't expect my opponent to just let me set up trick room without a countermeasure. So, I need to bring on a supporting Pokemon whose job it is to ensure the trick room gets set up. That Pokemon I choose is a follow me user. Togetic. Togetic has powerful defense stats, and while having low HP, can hold the Eviel item to double its defensive stats, making it endure much more damage than any other team member I bring can. As a backup follow me user, as well as a Pokemon to just become a jack of all trades, I'll bring in Volcarona. My Volcarona has tools to deal with many threats. The first being able to reduce my opponent's offensive power with Struggle Bug and luring in attacks with Rage Powder and potentially triggering his Flame Body. At the same time, Volcarona has powerful attacks to deal damage when needed. Now that covers the core of my team. Now I need some powerhouse damage, a Pokemon who can deal the damage needed and respond to any threats I face. This Pokemon I choose is going to be Primarina. While not as strong as my Hatterene, Primarina deals incredible damage and has more options for offensive pressure as one of her moves won't be restricted to being Trick Room, unlike Hatterene. That covers five of my team members. The sixth can be another heavy damage dealer for your team, or you can choose something else to fit your playstyle. For my team, I chose a Sleeper Pokemon, as I call it. This Pokemon has tech options or useful tools at its disposal to deal with unique situations I may encounter. This Pokemon is Lurantis. While Lurantis doesn't have the best reputation for being the scariest Pokemon in competitive, Lurantis isn't going to be in every battle I enter. 
Instead, Mylorantis goes in for specific battles, or specific situations that require this specialist on my team to be in for. While overall the team isn't perfect, it has gotten me to top 2k and close to top 1k now for two seasons in a row. It fits my playstyle perfectly and the team synchronizes incredibly well, enabling me to make plays that my previous teams weren't able to perform. But tell me about your teams in the comments section. How do you go about preparing for competitive or just team building in general? Who's your go-to Pokemon for whatever situation you come up against? Share the video if you can, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!